Hello, hello, welcome back to another video. So in the next few videos, we're going to be talking about classes, object and operator overloading. So uh, the syntax to create a class is you just type in the class and you type in your class name. In this case, we're going to make a student class. And so for now, I'm going to use uh, the keyword pass so that it doesn't throw an error. Basically, if you use pass, it's just saying uh, hold it for now, don't throw an error and then we'll come back and uh, fill it in with uh, code. So the the coding paradigm for uh, classes in Python is you want to uh, always make it in uh, camel case. So snake case is what we've been using for function names and variables. So for instance, uh, maybe we have a function uh, add two numbers. There you go. That's where we use a snake case. It's basically the underscore to separate uh, two or more words. In uh, with classes, you want to use camel case. So, for instance, uh, student is a single word, but maybe you have another class. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be making a credit card class. So we would call it credit card instead of credit card. OK. So remember, you should always use camel case when making classes. OK, so, you know, what's the uh, why is it important to uh, use classes? Well, Classes represent uh, entities where uh, you have your standard field and attributes. So you have your fields and attributes, and you have your behavior. And this is uh, these are your methods, your uh, class functions. So let's say I wanted to uh, have a list of student names and uh, just student information. Let's just say name and age. Maybe you would use a list and probably just keep everything in the list. So maybe my name is Kenny 23 and maybe uh, Bob and 15. And then, you know, with uh, only two information, uh, this is uh, two pieces of information. This is uh, pretty simple, right? You don't really need more than a list. But if you want something more complicated, uh, a list, uh, a class is um, the way to go. What if uh, we wanted to have the student uh, how, what do we want them to be associated with their list of classes, right? What if uh, we want to add a student ID? These type of things you might want to consider when you're designing your student class. So instead of doing it this way, we're going to create a student class and every class needs a constructor. So the way you uh, write your constructor is you type in uh, underscore in it. So th this is two underscore and then in it, in it stands for initialize and then two underscore after and then you pass in self and the reason you pass in self is self is basically a reference to the student class right now we just have an empty constructor but let's uh, add in a name and age parameter and then we have our attributes where in Python we put them inside the constructor so we'll say self dot name is equal to name and self dot age is equal to age so Self is basically saying the student, so it's basically student.name is going to be assigned the uh, name parameter. And then student.age is going to be this age parameter. If you did not have this self, you are basically saying take this name parameter and set it to itself. So it, it's confusing. So if you have uh, an attribute or a field with the same name as a parameter using self, basically distinguishes the two. So now whenever we create a student object, let's say S1 is equal to student, we have to uh, check to see if there are uh, parameters. So we have our name and age parameter. So I'm just going to use the one from before, Kenny and 23. And then when we pass in Kenny and 23, what gets called is this constructor. So it's basically saying, uh, let's create a student object, pass in Kenny for the name, so self.name is now Kenny and pass in 23 for the age. And then now if I were to print s1.name and comma s1.age, let's see what happens. We get Kenny and 23. Okay. So that's uh, just, just to clarify, an object is an instance of a class. Another thing we can do is we can add a, 
default parameters. So let's say age, uh, let's say age is not important in this case. Let's say we assume that anyone entering college is probably 18. Okay. So now uh, if I run this code, we can see it's still Kenny 23. Why is that? Because age by default was 18. If I pass in a parameter for age 23, it will first say, okay, age is 18. Then we reassign it so that age is 23 now. That's basically what happens. So if I took away this parameter 23 and just uh, passed in Kenny, let's run it. We get Kenny 18. Okay. So what happens instead of Kenny, I pass in an integer, uh, let's say 25. What will happen? Uh, let's see. We get 25, 18. So, uh, what happened? Basically, um, when when you pass in a parameter, Python does not uh, consider the typing. So even though we uh, we expect name to be a string type and age to be an integer, when we pass in 25, it goes from left to right. So it's saying name, you set it to 25, age, well, no parameters pass, so we use the default parameter 18. So actually, the the student one name is actually 25 and the age is 18. So that's something you want to be uh, careful with. Um, now, an another thing is because it goes from left to right, according to your parameters, I can't just have a uh, name, let's say, let's uh, use anonymous uh, as the default name. I can't do this because as soon as I pass in 25, it's not going to go to age, it's going to go to name, right? Because it's the leftmost parameter. That's why you see this error. If you have a left uh, parameter with a default value, you must assign uh, every parameter to the right of it. You have to assign a default value. So age, you need to uh, assign a default value. So let's assign it 18. And now if I run our code, you can still see it's still 25 and 18 because again, you go from left to right 25 is being passed for name. Okay. And if I took away 25 and run a uh, runner code, we get a non 18. So basically I didn't pass in any parameters. So we just stick with both the default parameters. Okay. So that's how you use uh, default parameters in your constructor. All right. Um, let's say we want to add more behaviors to a student because a student is more than just a name and age. They have a list of uh, courses. So we're just going to uh, default this to an empty list. Uh, we don't need a student to pass in a list to assign to uh, their courses. By default, whenever we create a student object, we just give them an empty list representing a list of courses. And in this case, we're just going to put in a course ID. So, uh, so maybe CS1114 or CS1134, right? Uh, this will be in the form of strings. So we're just going to have a list of strings for the courses. Now, what we can do is we can say s1.courses.append, right? Because we can access the, the fields and we can append uh, CS1134. And then we can print s1.courses. Run our code. We see that now the student has CS1134 in their course list. However, you do not want to do it this way because typically when we write classes, you want to keep uh, this uh, the data members. You want to keep these fields uh, hidden in a way that we should not expect the user to directly access them. So instead of doing that, we should add, add a method. So we will say add course. And then we'll add a uh, course parameter. And we'll say self.courses.append course. So uh, what happened here? Oh, we should pass in self. Don't forget to pass in self. So we have uh, s1.courses. So instead of doing s1.courses.append, we're just going to say s1.add course. And then if we save and run, we get the same behavior. Now, another thing you might want to consider is uh, what it, what happens if the student adds a course that they're already taking? Uh, normally, actually, you do not enroll in two of the same exact courses, right? So in this case, we'll check if uh, self dot courses. Uh, if, so if course 
uh, in self.courses, maybe we can raise an exception. So this is how you would raise a basic error and say, course uh, student already enrolled. So here's your error message. So let's run our code and we see that we only enrolled in one course. If I do this again and run it, we get an, uh, an error. So we have an exception, student already enrolled. Okay, so the problem, we have a problem here in that notice that the courses don't get printed. So when we're programming, uh, you might want to consider when to use an exception. In this case, uh, maybe you uh, you don't want to use exception because uh, you know if you're already enrolled, maybe you have a, another list of courses that you want to enroll in. For instance, I want to say S1 dot course uh, CSLM 14 or S1 dot course uh, CS uh, 2124. Right? I want to add these uh, two other courses, but because um, I have an error, my program ends. So perhaps instead of adding an exception, uh, maybe you just uh, do the opposite. So if course not in self.courses, you can just add it yourself. So basically it's saying if, if, if the course is not in the uh, course list, you just add it. Otherwise, do nothing with this uh, method. Or alternatively, instead of uh, doing it this way, we can just print the message and just do else add the course. So if the course is already in self.courses, just print the student is already enrolled. Otherwise, you just uh, append the course. So basically enroll the student. Okay. And that's uh, basically it for our uh, methods. Uh, another thing we can do is add uh, uh, a way to display the student information. So what happens when we, uh, so actually let's run this to make sure everything's okay. So CS 1134, so student already enrolled. So it happened when we tried to enroll a second time. And then let's just print the courses here. Okay, we have three courses. Now what happens if we try to print S1? Right, the student itself, we run it, we get student is in this uh, memory location. So it's, there's, uh, when we print a student, we did not define uh, how we should display the student, right? So by default, it will always display the, uh, the class type. So in this case, it's a student type and then the, it's memory uh, address location. So the way you want to override that is add a dunder method called string. So this is a dunder method. Dunder stands for double underscore. And uh, formally we call this operator overloading. So this is the string operator. And basically what this allows us to do is let's just for now return self.name plus space plus self dot, um, what was the other parameter, age. Actually, be careful here. We wanna convert the age to a string. So basically what this parameter does is, uh, sorry, what this um, operator does is, it allows us to convert our student uh, object to a string object. So this is a string representation. So basically, now if we, run our code, we can see it's no longer this uh, this memory address location. Instead, we get the name anon18 by passed in Kenny23. We get Kenny23, okay? So that's how you would override printing because printing is always going to request the string representation of uh, the object. Another thing I want to do is uh, define a wrapper so this is basically short for representation, and this is used in the terminal. So in this case, it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna return uh, string of self, okay? So basically, when you call string of self, remember, this operator allows us to convert the object to a string, and the way we do that is you just pass it into a string with the parentheses. So in this case, we pass in self. Remember, self represents the student. 
So we're passing in student into a string. All right, and then uh, let me show you the difference between a the wrapper and string. In this case, we're not going to have any difference. It's the same uh, exact thing when you print. Uh, so wrapper is for the console. So let's say uh, we're using uh, Python. So let's say we have a string uh, ABC. If I print X, you see that it just says ABC without the parentheses. So that would be the string representation of the string object. But it's wrapper representation. So this second one is different in that uh, if we if I type in X, the variable again, we get the quotation marks. So this is the actual representation of the object. OK, so when you print, it calls a string. And then if you uh, just type it in into the terminal, you get the representation instead. So that's the difference. And here we uh, we're not going to worry about that because string wrapper, when you print, that's all. Uh, all we care is what it looks like when we print. Um, yeah, so maybe uh, we want to add more detail. So let's just quickly do that name and then add the next line character and then plus H and then plus courses. So actually, uh, let's combine this. And then we want to take the string representation of the courses because it's a list uh, object. So we run it now. We get name is Kenny, age is 23, courses. Here's our list of courses. OK, so uh, that's the basics of uh, classes and the constructor methods. Right? We have our fields here and we have our string and wrapper operators that allows us to call print. OK. Uh, yep, so uh, that's all for today, and uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Oops, uh, sorry I forgot to mention earlier. Um, so with the default parameters, uh, if you want to specify a parameter for age but not the name, what you can do is you can just type in the parameter name, which is age, and just type in age equal 23. So if we run this, we can now see that uh, anon is the name and 23 is the age. Okay, so that's uh, just something I want to clarify that uh, you can, uh, if you choose, if you have all default parameters, you can choose which ones to change.